They're nerfing Catalyst again. In one very small way, but then they're giving it like five buffs, so it's not really a big deal. Welcome everyone, my name is Mugglet Douglas, but that'll be Reginald Esquire the 4th. Today is Friday, November 11th, 2022. We just watched an hour of CMC and Roy Roy Marks, and we are now going to go through the notes of the upcoming November 29th balance update preview. We need Dennis. You do every okay. The last three videos I've done, people have been screaming for Dennis. I think he looks horrific with the beard. It uh, it's it, we'll, we'll do it for a little bit. All right. Sigil of Absorption is a longtime outlier in World vs. World, largely due to a bug with its cooldown or lack thereof when used against other players. We're still planning a larger pass on boon applications and boon removal in World v. World for a future update. But Sigil of Absorption was something we wanted to address sooner rather than later. Uh, Superior Sigil of Absorption uh, fixed a, an issue which prevented this trade from having an internal cooldown. Uh, nearly every sigil in the game that does anything impressive has a uh, cooldown on it, so this was obviously an oversight that they wanted to get corrected. Elementa List. Scepter is a weapon that sees some play in PvP, but it struggles to find a place in competitive nodes because a lot of its skills are blah, blah, you know what, this is a lot of nodes, I'm just going to uh, cover this. Uh, Scepter was bad, and they are trying to buff it up. Boom. Okay, so there we go. Uh, some of the, the big things that they're doing here. Um, by the way, as always, if you want the, the nitty gritty details, I will have the links to all of the sources that I'm pulling information from in the description down below. Uh, we have got the, uh, you know, we watched a hour long broadcast on this and then we are going over these notes right now. Uh, let me, I'm actually going to switch over to this so that you guys can see this a little bit larger. All right, the first thing is Dragon's Tooth. Uh, Dragon's Tooth is going to follow the target. They showed a demonstration. They had a, a golem marching around and they cast Dragon's Tooth on it and the Dragon's Tooth would follow so it would always hit unless the target does like a dodge roll or something. So Dragon's Tooth will be uh, able to actually catch targets in um, you know competitive game modes whereas before it almost always missed unless the target was downstate. Um, Phoenix now inflicts an additional stack of burning if they're already burning. Uh, reduce the burning stacks in PvE though. Uh, Ice Shards reduce the aftercast by um, fractions of a second. Uh, Shatterstone will now inflict, inflict chill instead of vulnerability and strike enemies on the initial cast in addition to the explosion. Reduce the explosion time from 1 second to 0.67 seconds. It is very quick now. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.66 to 1.0 PvE and 1.5 to 0.6 BvP in World World. Um, this is very reminiscent of what they just did with Druid Astral 2, which uh, you know makes a small seed blossom and then erupt, but it happened so slowly before it was very hard to hit moving targets. Uh, they've, they've done almost the exact same thing with this, uh, which is good to see. Water Trident is no longer ground targeted and instead it fires projectiles at the target and up to two nearby enemies. The skill no longer heals allies, instead it heals the caster when you hit an enemy. The skill now deals increased damage to chilled enemies. Uh, it has ammunition now, having two charges instead of one, and increased the power coefficient by about triple in PvE and about two and a half times in PvP in World vs. World. Um, so depending on your viewpoint on this, this could be considered a buff, could be considered a nerf. Water Trident was one of the only ways that Scepter could heal allies. Uh, it can no longer do that, now it just heals you, you greedy little elementalist. Um, but it has ammo and does a little bit different things. Uh, Lightning Strike. This skill now strikes up to two additional enemies near the target and inflicts vulnerability. So Lightning Strike and Blinding Flash have a little bit of splash damage now. Uh, power coefficient, small buff in PvE only. Blinding Flash, uh, like I said, has a little bit of splash as well and inflicts weakness uh, against vulnerable enemies and has an ammunition count. Rocket Barrier skill now grants barrier and resistance to the user in addition to the other stuff it already did. When you use Hurl afterward, Hurl happens much, much faster. The delay between projectiles has gone down to 0.2 seconds. Dust Devil is now ground targeted. They displayed this on a group of golems um, and you when you cast it it makes a field you know the tornado appears and just spins there in that position uh, for three pulses. Uh, enemies in the area are blinded by the first pulse and if they are bleeding they will get crippled by it. 
Uh, tectonic shift, reduce the barrier pulse from 778 to 506 in PvP only. Fortify, increase the cooldown from 30 to 50 seconds in PvP only. Storm Soul, the bonus damage from this trait will now always affect Defiant Foes. You're going to see this as a recurring theme through these notes. A lot of the classes have traits that uh, would go off when you would stun a target, and they were harder to use in PvE. There was a lot of them under the Warrior and Untamed categories, and they have made it so that these traits just simply always are an effect when you're fighting a Defiant boss, which is a, like a, you know, something that has a, a break bar, essentially. Evasive Arcana fixed an issue that prevented this trait from triggering flame burst when dodging. This was a long-standing bug that they said that is now fixed. Uh, Tempest. Elemental Bastion increased the healing attribute scaling by almost double in world versus world only. Weaver. Shearing Edge. This skill now inflicts bleeding in addition to other effects. Twin Strike gets one extra burn stack in PvP. Flame Uprising gets two more seconds on its burn in PvP only. Catalyst. Hardened Auras, Empowering Auras, Staunch Auras, and Elemental Epitome. These traits will now only trigger when the Catalyst gives themselves an aura, not when someone else gives the Catalyst an aura. That was the teeny tiny nerf I was joking about before. Um, most of the time this is going to be unnoticeable, I feel like. Flame Wheel, Icy Coil, Crescent Wind, and Rocky Loop. These skills now strike enemies once per second instead of using a projectile. Uh, it increases the power coefficient from uh, 001 to 0.25 in PvE only. So massive power coefficient increase, but that's PvE only. That's important to note that. Spectacular Sphere, trait no longer reduces outgoing damage. It causes Earth Sphere to grant Aegis instead of resistance in PvE only. This is very cool. Uh, if, you go, if you're a class that goes from not having access to Aegis to having access to Aegis, a lot of doors open for you in the raid world. So that's actually quite interesting. Um, empowering Auras increase the damage bonus per stack from 2% per to 3% per in PvE only. Uh, that's the end of the Elementalist section. Engineer. For this update, we focused on tuning up both power and condition builds for Hollowsmith in PvE, neither of which were doing good. Uh, we also made an adjustment to Mechanist to better reward players who are able to position well. Uh, I'll come back to that note. Um, we do like that Mechanist is a viable option for lower intensity playstyle, but we see it as slightly overperforming relative to where we want those builds to be. I, that sentence is completely fair, IMO. We've also tuned up a few skills for Scrapper and PvP. We're being a bit careful as we've seen the result of Scrapper's defenses are too potent. Um, this is in reference to um, some years ago, uh, there was a PvP season where one Scrapper standing on a point, it would take three or more people to dislodge them. They were just like immovable objects. Um, they were just, they were so durable and had so much barrier generation. That's what laid to, uh, that's what led to later, um, they got the, the trait that reduced their vitality by a large margin, uh, which was just recently reversed. So they're, they're trying to make Scrapper better, but they are having PTSD of those days and watching out for that. Core changes to engineer. Box of nails. I've... I thought Box of Nails and Ranger Hyenas, they had forgotten about both of them. And that's apparently just one of them. So Box of Nails is Toolkits 2 button, I believe. That's the kit. Uh, for those that don't play Engineer, they pull you with a magnet. They have a shield. They smack you with a pry bar. And there's a Box of Nails on the 2 button. Uh, box of Nails, uh, usually you pour it on the ground. It, it leaves little uh, tacks on the ground. And they do uh, like 2 bleeding damage and a cripple if someone runs over them. However, even if you're a full condition damage engineer, the damage is so bad on them, it's almost not even worth the button press. Um, the first pulse of the skill will now immobilize enemies that are already CC'd or movement impaired, and you can now hold two charges. This means you could double tap it, use both charges, the first one will cripple anyone near you, and the second one will immobilize them. Um, so, will be interesting to see if that's enough to make it worth the click. Uh, rifle Burst, and that is Rifle 1, uh, which of course every engineer loves and everybody else hates right now. The skill now fires one piercing projectile before using the grenade instead of two. Now right now it does piercing shot, piercing shot, boom. The boom is a grenade. I, I'm actually not positive how they're doing this. I'm not sure if this means that there will be a normal bullet, then a piercing bullet, then a grenade or if it will just be one piercing bullet, then grenade. The wording of this makes me unsure of if it's non-pierce, pierce, nade, or if it's just pierce, nade. Uh, however, 
it in either case there will be one less piercing shot um one of the the main ways that i would use this is like if i was fighting for example Drakkar or to quaddle i could sit on one side of to and aim for his far hand and shoot through his left hand into his right hand and basically be getting double damage and they are going to be uh reducing that in in some way um and if you weren't an engineer, that's part of the way they were able to pad numbers so so much when fighting dragons. Uh, grenade power coefficient uh, increased from 0.4 to 0.6 in PVE only, and the piercing projectile, which they were going from two of those to one of those, is getting a slight bump as well. Increased the skill animation speed. Total animation duration remains the same as the previous version in PVE only. Scrapper Electro Whirl, that's the hammer spin, uh, a little bit stronger in PvP. Bypass Coating, uh, I believe that is the stun break that's on Blast Gyro. Um, yes, yes it is. Uh, so that's the tool belt skill that comes with Blast, gy uh, Blast Gyro. It is a 35 second cooldown stun break and it is going down to 25 seconds in PvP only. Medic Gyro, uh, which honestly gets almost no usage, is uh, going from 30 seconds cooldown to 25 in PvP only. I don't see a note about it, so I'm going to mention something that they mentioned in the stream that we just watched. Um, healing Turret. So Healing Turret, uh, when you drop it, it, it should overcharge, and then if you detonate it immediately, it would do a, a water f combo field, I believe, and then it would do an additional heal. However, if you were in an emergency and you were mashing the key, it should drop turret, overcharge, detonate, and then everything's resolved. However, if you clicked really fast, it would drop turret, detonate, overcharge. Oh, I can't overcharge now. It's gone. It would do it out of order, and it would be very disappointing. Um, they said that they fixed that. They said now, even if you're mashing the key, it should overcharge before the detonation, which makes it go, in my eyes, from an unreliable heal that I would never use to a reliable one that may be. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, that is a change coming to Healing Turret that I don't see in the notes that they talked about today. Hollowsmith Cauterize. Uh, skill now removes additional conditions while used above 100% heat. Particle Accelerator. The skill now gains bonus damage while above 50% heat and additional bonus damage while above 100% heat in addition to its previous effects. Prismatic Singularity. The skill now gains bonus damage on the explosion portion of the attack when used above 100% heat in addition to its previous effects. Increase the power coefficient from 0.5 to 1.2 in PvE only. Um, there, essentially, I, I'm going to summarize this. There was a lot of skills under Hollowsmith that did not have any bonuses for above 100% heat. There is a trait that, incre that increases how much heat you can hold and gives bonuses for skills ab when you're above that. And there were many skills that never received their bonuses. So they have, are gone in and they have added bonuses to a lot of these skills when above 100% heat to work better with that trait that I mentioned. Um, so a lot of these have gain bonus damage, gain bonus boons, bonus duration, blah, 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 blah. So a, a lot of the, now obviously no one Hollowsmith can use all of these skills. You don't have enough space for all of that, but, um, you know, it, whichever of these you take, if you're above hundred percent heat, you're getting more out of it than you were yesterday. Uh, so all of that is happening. Um, lots of buffs in PvE only going through this whole section. Solar focusing lens increase the burning duration on enemies from two seconds to three. Photonic blasting module increase burning from two stacks from two second uh, for two seconds to five stacks for four seconds PvE only. Uh, it's also worth noting that they were specifically trying to buff both power and condition damage Hollowsmith in PvE. So you will see uh, stuff that are nods to both of those. Mechanist, mechanical genius. Um, combat attribute bonuses to the mech are reduced by 50% if the engineer is more than a range of 360 away from the mech for a certain amount of time. So, I this is the first time since mech, mechs came out that my ranger pet has not been jealous of them. Um, so this is why up here, when they mentioned we made an adjustment to mechanists to better reward players, it, it's basically players that are good are getting what they were before, and players that are bad are getting worse. Uh, now, what, what it is, is if you're not standing by your mech, your mech will, after some amount of time, and I don't know how long it is, will lose 50% of the stats that they're inheriting from you. So that's not to say they're going to go down to half strength, but it's like, if, if, they're, if they were this strong, and then they inherit some stats to you, half of those stats would be lost. They're not going to go all the way down. However, that is pretty brutal. Um, if you are... 
the standard bread and butter rifle mech, which most mechs are. Uh, if you're a mechanist with a rifle and you've got the mech with the guns, the main thing you need to know is anytime you move during a boss fight and you go to a new position, you need to hit uh, pet return to me, whatever you've got that button bound to, your pet will run over to you and then hit pet attack. And then it will start shooting again. So if you position, you're going to need to reposition your bot or its stats will start draining like OG League of Legends Heimerdinger's turrets and uh, it's, it's going to get really weak. Uh, that also means uh, on, you know, there are some really high-end fights, for example, uh, heal mech, where you might leave your bot on the boss giving barrier and stuff to your allies, and then you go running around the room to do some mechanic. You can still do that, but your bot will be getting weaker as you're running around. So, uh, or use shift signet. There's no, there's no, you could, yes, use shift signet, but there's, there's no reason to do that when you could just use a skill that has no cooldown and save your skill stun break for uh, another time but that's what's happening to uh max guardian now um the broadcast that we watched about a third of it was just talking about guardian because firebrand got some big changes however uh all of the types of guardian got some changes firebrand is a specialization that has access to a few too many tools with minimal investment for five years Tomes are a large component of this, as the utilities of Tomes and Resolve of Courage are easily accessible even for damage-focused builds. Our goal is for this update to be increased, uh, to increase the opportunity cost of accessing these tools. And to that end, pages are now a shared resource that builds over time. The Firebrands will now need to more carefully decide how they spend their pages, whether they want to focus on damage support or a mix of both. We've also made improvements to other types of Guardians. Um, so we'll talk about the pages in a second. Core Guardian. Binding Blade. Increase the pulse damage power coefficient uh, by 50% in PvE only. Sword of Wrath. Increase power coefficient by a little bit in PvE only. Sword Arc. Increase power coefficient by a tiny bit in PvE. Sword of Justice. Increase power coefficient by a tiny bit in PvE. Dragon Hunter. Uh, I, I, like, I like the Dragon Hunter section. It's like they're trying to make Dragon Hunter's longbow viable in PvE. And honestly, I think that would be cool. Um, well, I not, don't know if they're going to be successful, but they're trying to. Uh, heavy Light. This trait now gives a 10% damage increase when striking Defiant Foes in addition to its previous effect. The bonuses do not stack. True Shot in PvE. Increase the power coefficient from 2.44 to 3.2. Increase cooldown from 4 to 6 seconds. Hunter's Ward. PvE only. Reduce the cooldown by half. Increase the power coefficient by triple. Increase power coefficient of the final hit by a small amount. Spear of Justice, increase the power coefficient by, that's about a third. Dragon's Maw, uh, in PvE only, is going from 75 second cooldown to 15. Increase the power coefficient from 2.4 to 3.6. Big Game Hunter, increase the bonus tether duration from 66% to 100% in PvE only. And then this last line is only in World v. World, reduced the Baby Gate ring duration of the longbow from 5 seconds to 3. Now, if you're in World v. World and there's a horde of people running over you and you get Baby Gated for 3 seconds, you're still mucking dead. You're still dead. This isn't going to save you. Uh, however, they said they wanted it to be a little less punishing if you get caught by this. Um... And for those that don't know, the standard defense, if you see uh, the Dragon Hunter firing, you know, all the arrows are raining down. It's like arrows, arrows, baby gates. So if you're, if you're just like arrows, arrows, dodge roll, you don't get the baby gate. That's the standard defense to that if you get caught in it. Um, maybe that'll help somebody out. Uh, Firebrand. The page mechanic for Firebrand Tomes has been completely reworked. Okay, so uh, one, the Tomes have no cooldown. You can go, hit F1 and go into it and out of it at any time just like an engineer kit. However, when you use F1, F2, or F3, you lose their passive bonuses for like 70 seconds. So you don't wanna do it unless you need to do it. Additionally, the pages are, you use, the, the pages are kinda of like Thief Initiative. It, they recharge over time. Uh, by default, it's eight seconds per page, and you use those pages for any of the tomes that you're in. Uh, Justice, Resolve, or Courage. They all use the same pages. Additionally, some of the skills use multiple pages. Uh, the, the pages are like a cost. Now remember, uh, it, it takes a page eight seconds to recharge. By default, there are some traits that help with this. So that means that if a skill costs two pages, that would be 16 seconds of those resources. Um, <clears throat> now the reason they did this, I want to talk about this for a second, because there's a lot of people that just don't know. Uh, let's say you've got a burn brand. They 100% focus on burning. They're just burn, burn, I like fire, that's it. I play the pyro in Team Fortress, that's it. 
And let's say you've also got a Weaver that is 100% focused on damage. They have both taken every single trait, skill, specialization, and weapon to get the maximum damage they possibly can out of their class. They do roughly the same damage. The Weaver has no utility. The Guardian, at a moment's notice, can still give their group a ton of stability, resistance, and reflect projectiles, and 20 other things because of the, the tomes. That's it. They, 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 that was always in the back pocket. It was always in the back pocket. Um, that's part of why they've been just so, so good. So now, if you, for example, were a burn brand and you used all your pages to do more burning damage, you and then suddenly you're like, oh god, I need stability. Well, you're out of pages. You're gonna have to plan ahead a little bit. Just like a druid with astral power, or a uh, Necro with Shroud, or a Thief with Initiative. Uh, or a Vindicator with a Dodge, you know? If you're in PvE, you might always uh, use your first dodge for damage and keep your second dodge just in case. It's gonna be like that. If you know you're on a fight where you're like, my group will need stability at these moments, always keep a page ready for stability and just use all the others for damage, that sort of thing. That's the new system. It's, a re it's not a direct buff or nerf, it's a rework, and honestly, I think it's a good one. Um, just because, uh, again, like there, there was, they, they got all of that for nothing for this whole time. Okay, so, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so Injustice, um, uh, chapter one, it costs one page, has no cooldown. Chapter two costs one page, has an eight second cooldown. Chapter three in PvE costs one page with a 10 second cooldown in PvP. It costs two pages for a 15 second cooldown. Uh, four and five are two pages each. You can see the uh, cooldown timers there. I won't read every one of these out loud, um, but you can see um, the the cooldown increases for each skill. Uh, the later stuff is usually uh, two pages. In the, for example, Resolve Epilogue is considered so powerful it costs three pages in PvP and World v. World. Uh, Courage Epilogue costs three pages as well. Now, um, we talked about that uh, the you know the eight seconds thing. There are many traits. Uh, do they have them in here? Uh, you know, I'll keep reading and I'll I'll I'll, I'll go say what I was about to say if it's not covered. The skill, uh, chapter one searing spell. The skill now inflicts vulnerability in addition to its current effects. Uh, chapter four scorched after scorched aftermath increases burning uh, and bleeding duration from two to five seconds in PVE only. Chapter two radiant recovery increases the number of conditions removed from one to two in PVP. Uh, Epilogue Eternal Oasis, which is one of the ones that cost um, three pages in PvP, is... where did it go? Uh, now increases the number of conditions converted into boons from two to five. So the cost is pretty massive, but it is very powerful. Uh, Chapter 1 Unflinching Charge now grants protection instead of stability. Uh, so that was basically the auto attack, uh, like the, the basic attack of Courage was spamming stability in front of you. Uh, you. You still have other ways of giving people stability, but it is no longer on that button. Uh, Swift Scholar Trait. This trait will now refund you a page after using three consecutive skills in a single tome. Uh, so you, you use three of any skill within one tome back to back and you'll get a, a page refilled immediately. Stoic Demeanor, this trait has been reworked. You retain the Tome of Courage passive effect while it's on cooldown. Grants boons to nearby allies when you disable, immobilize, or slow an enemy. Um, the Quickfire trait will have you retain the Tome of Justice passive effect while it's on cooldown. And the Lore Master trait has you retain the Tome of Resolve passive effect while it's on cooldown. So each Grandmaster trait is focused on one of the Tome's passive effects always being locked in. Uh, also, part of Loremaster is you generate pages more quickly. Now, it doesn't say it on the page I'm on right now. On the slides they showed during the broadcast, I believe they said it took it from 8 seconds per page to 6 seconds per page. Um, Willbender, Heaven's Palm and PvE getting a fat buff. Uh, over half the cooldown is gone and triple the power coefficient. Lethal Tempo increased the uh, bonus damage per stack by double. Tyrant's Momentum increased damage per stack by going from 2 to 3%. So some nice bonuses to PvE Willbender. We'll see if it is enough to, uh, you know, put them where they want them. Good morning, Good morning Lord Heisen. Uh, Mesmer. One of our goals for Mesmer is to address the performance of the Staff and Axe Mirage build, which we feel doesn't have to sacrifice quite enough for the immense boon uptime it provides. We've moved some of the boon application to the clone's staff ambush, which will force the Mirage to choose between higher boon uptime with staff clones. I just realized that, uh, hang on just a second here. Um, 
me just a moment here. Going to resize this. I just realized some of it is cropped off. Uh, it was the perfect size earlier for the broadcast. There we go. Okay. Uh, bah, 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 bah. We've moved some of the boon application to the clones staff ambush, which will force the Mirage to choose between higher boon up time with staff clones or higher damage output with axe clones. We've targeted some improvements to Chrono's power damage builds in PvE, bumping up the damage of some sword skills, wells, and Chrono Phantasma. We've also slightly reduced Continuum Split's duration in PvP after seeing the performance of Chronomancer following its restored access to distortion. Um... The short of it, I myself tried Chrono, and I'm, I'm not great at it. I, I, I played a couple of rounds with Chrono in PvP. Uh, it's it's pretty scary, and I'm, I'm not even that good with it. Um, the higher-end Chronos that I would run into as a currently a high gold 3 player, I, I felt like there was no way to win. Uh, they're in, incredibly, incredibly powerful, uh, both in offense and defense. They were they were tanky buggers, and they also just had the power of gun on their side, uh, as a metaphor. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, Core Mesmer, Mind Slash, and Mind Gash are getting small buffs in PvE only. Mind Spike is getting an increased power coefficient when striking enemies with boons from 1.0 to 1.5 in PvE, uh, PvE only. Um, why can I not... Hang on just a second. I cannot scroll on the page. Did it freeze on me? Hold on. We're going to F5 the page here. Uh, there we go. Okay, yeah, the page is frozen. Okay. Uh, Chronomancer, Chrono Phantasma, increase the resummon Phantasm damage from 75% to 100% in PvE only. Uh, well of Calamity, increase the power coefficient of initial strikes from... They're doubling it in PvE only. Uh, Gravity Well, PvE only, reduce the cooldown from 90 to 60 seconds. Increase the power coefficient for the pulsing strikes from 0.6 to 0.8, and the power coefficient of the final strike from 2.4 to 3.0. So Gravity Well, much more often and much stronger. Continuum Split, reduce duration from 1.5 to 6 uh, to 1 to 4 in PvP only. So, <clears throat> still does what it did before, but you have less time to do it, so the skill the required to do it is going to be a little bit higher. Mirage Chaos Vortex. Clones using this skill will now grant the same boons in an area of effect around the Mesmer instead of around the clones themselves. Reduced the alacrity duration from 2.5 seconds to 1 second. Reduced might stacks from 8 to 2. Now, it's important to note that although you're, you're providing less alacrity and less might, the clones are then providing the, the alacrity and might as well, uh, which make up for that, unless you choose to... Swap to Axe. If you swap to Axe, you're doing more damage. Stay Staff, you're doing more boons. So you gotta choose what's needed for that situation. So that is, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's how, that, how they presented it. Um, Necromancer. Power Reaper is another damage build that we have sought to improve in PvE, bringing up some of its less uh, potent skills in Reaper Shroud and giving it a bit more consistent pressure while out of Shroud. On the competitive side, we've adjusted a few less used utility skills. Corrupt Boon is a skill that saw significant reductions after it gained a second ammunition and hasn't seen a ton of play since then. We've removed the extra charge of PvP and bumped up the number of corrupts to make the skill a more potent threat. And yeah, it's freaking terrifying looking now. Corrupt Boon is only going to have one ammo count in PvP, but it will con uh, convert five boons to conditions up from two. And they're adding six seconds to the cooldown. So, whew. Uh, Spectral Armor in PvP World v. World reduced duration from 8 to 6, but reduced the cooldown from 45 to 30. Uh, Corrupt Boon is unblockable, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you can dodge roll it, but uh, you, it's a small animation, so you gotta really have your eyes peeled. Uh, Signet of Spite reduced the cooldown from 60 seconds to 40 in PvP and World v. World. Signet of the Locust increased healing per target struck from 500 to 800 and reduced the cooldown from 30 to 25. Soul Barb's trait increased the duration from 10 to 15 in PvE only. Specifically, Reaper. Chilling Nova reduced the cooldown from 8 seconds to 3 in PvE only. Nightfall reduced the cooldown by 5 seconds in PvE. Dust Strike increased the power coefficient slightly in PvE. Chilling Scythe, uh, which I believe is the 
third hit of the Greatsword auto attack chain. Correct me if I'm wrong, friends. The skill now reduces the recharge of Gravedigger whenever it hits an enemy. Uh, so I believe that's every third auto attack hit, your Gravedigger gets reduced cooldown. Uh, Death's charge in PvE only increased the power coefficient of the initial strikes uh, by double of what it was. Fixed an issue that prevented the damage of the initial strike from being listed on the skill's tooltips. So that's just a text error. Uh, Executioner's Scythe. Uh, PvE only increased the power coefficient against targets at or above half health to 3.0. Increased power coefficient against targets below half health to 4.0. Increased the power coefficient against targets below 25% health to 5.0. Scourge. Feed the Corruption. Uh, they specifically talked about this for a while, and the TLDR is this skill has been very problematic in World v. World and is too powerful, and they want to do something else with it in the future, but for now, this solves the issue. The following boon applications from the Feed from Corruption trait have been adjusted in World v. World only. Might stacks from 3 to 1, Protection and Resolution, half of what you got before, Regen, half of what you got before, Stability, uh, instead of 2 stacks for 5 seconds, it's 1 stack for 3, and Vigor, half of what you got before. They basically said a class that doesn't do a lot, like, like a build that wasn't really built to bring boons was providing way too many boons. That was their logic. Take it as you will. So that's the only change uh, that's directly Scourge. Uh, Ranger. Untamed is one of the specializations that struggles the most against defiant enemies. Uh, once again, that's basically a, like a boss that you cannot stun. Uh, Ranger, uh, Untamed, has a lot of skills that are like, you know, bonus damage after stunning a target, etc. This is talking about that topic. Um, a lot of its kit is built around capitalizing against targets that are crowd controlled. As part of a larger pass, we've adjusted these skills to always inflict their bonuses against defined enemies to make them more reliable in end game PvE content. We've also made some improvements to the non unleashed side of the hammer kit to improve its defensive capabilities. Fervent Force is a trait that we're likely to bring down in a future update, but we want to improve other options up for Untamed before doing so. In PvP, we've brought down the Drake family's chomp damage, primarily targeting the burst potential it brings to the Untamed builds. And yeah, apparently um, Chomp has uh, kind of taken over what the tail swipe used to be and was becoming problematic. Um, for those that don't play Ranger, Chomp is just one of the abilities that Drake pets have, the big lizards. And uh, so they are toning that down. Uh, rounded out the Ranger updates with some improvements to Druid healing in World vs. World. We've seen more Druids being played since the October update, but we think it could use a slight bump to solidify its place as a viable support pick. Uh, so Chomp uh, got a nerf in PvP only. Predator's Onslaught, the damage bonus from this trait, will now always affect Defiant Foes. Again, that's basically a boss that can't be stunned. Astral Wisp, that's Druid Staff 2, that makes the little ball of light that follows someone and heals the whole area for a couple of seconds. Um, double Heal Scaling in World v. World only. Uh, Ancestral Grace, that's the Staff 3, that's the movement skill with the burst heal at the end of it. Uh, increase the healing by 50% of what it was in World v. World only. Ancient Seeds will now trigger against Defiant Foes in addition to previous effects. Uh, this was, I don't believe this was mentioned during the broadcast. Um, I don't know that that's really going to matter. So Ancient Seeds, if you're full Condi and someone stands in the root the entire time, it does 10k bleeding. Uh, however, if you wanted to be a Condi, a, a cond conditioned damage ranger on a raid boss, you're probably not going to play Druid. But, uh, okay, it's interesting, I guess. Um, Untamed. The following skills will now apply their bonuses against defiant enemies. Uh, Venomous Outburst, Rending Vines, Enveloping Haze, Unleashed Wild Swing, and Unleashed Savage Shockwave. Perilous Gift. They talked about this briefly. This is the healing skill that is specifically for the Untamed. Um, it's, it's not good, and I don't know of any Untamed build in any game mode of the game that uses it. Uh, it, it basically makes you unkillable, but, uh, for a couple seconds, but it hardly does any healing. So if you're like, I can't die. Now I'm dead. <laughs> like, that's kind of how it works. Uh, so now, it will no longer prevent lethal damage. Instead, it just prevents all incoming striking condition damage for its duration. So instead of you have to use it at really low health, you could use it when you're about to get a burst at any health total and benefit from it. Um, I'd be interested to see if this is uh, becomes worth using or if that is just, you know, the first step of many. Relentless Whirl increased the stability from one stack to, uh, for two to two stacks for three. Wild Swing now grants barrier when you hit an enemy. Overbearing Smash now grants barrier when striking an enemy if they were using a skill. Reduce cooldown from 15 seconds to 12 seconds in competitive modes. 
Unleash Overbearing Smash, reduce cooldown from 15 to 12 in competitive. Savage Shockwaves, the first strike of this skill, now applies weakness instead of immobilize. The second strike now applies immobilize instead of weakness. The skill now grants protection to the user. Reduce casting time from 1 second to 0.75 seconds, so faster animation. Reduce cooldown from 18 seconds to 15 seconds in competitive. Unleashed Savage Shock Wave. A reduced casting time from 1 second to 0.75. Reduce cooldown from 18 to 15 in PvP World v. World. Thump. Reduce cooldown for by 5 seconds in competitive. Unleashed Thump. Reduce cooldown by 5 seconds in competitive. Restorative Strikes now also grants you protection when you or your pet unleash. Debilitating Strikes now applies poison instead of vulnerability. They said this would be a slight bump to damage because most of the time in any group in PvE, you've got max vuln on the target without even trying. So now you're getting poison, whereas before you were probably getting nothing out of this. Um, and slow instead of weakness when disabling a foe based on your current state in PvE only. Ferocious Symbiosis increased damage bonus per stack from 3 to 4% in PvE only. Okay, so there's a lot for Untamed. About a third of that was just when hitting defiant enemies, this stuff is going to work now that previously did not before. Whew, Revenant. Vindicator is, uh, has continued to be a powerful force in PvP uh, after the most recent set of changes. That's uh, putting it lightly. Uh, we're making a few additional reductions in this update. We see Vindicator is doing a bit too much damage when investing heavily into defensive traits, so we've shaved down a few skills to create more of a decision point between damage and defense. We've also reduced the stability from Reaver's Rage and removed the ability to dodge while immobilized with the goal of making Vindicator slightly easier to bring down. Excuse me. The last set of changes didn't have quite enough impact on condition-based Revenant builds in PvP. We're following up with a few more adjustments to improve their damage output and free up a bit more energy while in Legendary Demon Stance. We focused on improving damage builds for both Herald and Vindicator PvE, improving the potency of Sword Offhand, Legendary Assassin Stance, and Dragon Stance, and the Luxon side of the Alliance. So, Core Revenant, Shackling Wave in PvE increased power coefficient slightly. Uh, Death Strike in PvE increased power coefficient slightly. Uh, Impossible Odds increased power coefficient on secondary strikes slightly in PvE. Jade Winds increased power coefficient by double of what it was in PvE. Seething Malice uh, double the condition damage it was providing in PvP. Banish Enchantment reduced the energy costs slightly in PvP. Call to Anguish, same treatment. Rising Tide reduced health threshold from 90% to 75% in PvE only. Herald specifically, Elemental Blast, the cooldown is going down by 3 seconds in PvE only. Burst of Strength, reduced cooldown by 3 seconds in PvE only. Increased the effect duration uh, from 5 seconds to 10. Reduced the damage bonus from 25% to 15. Damage bonus now applies to condition damage as well as strike damage. Uh, so PvE Herald buffs. Chaotic Release increased the power coefficient by double of what it was in PvE only. Vindicators. So it's 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 funny as a ranger main. Uh, the most exciting thing about this entire patch notes, uh, I should say, ranger engineer main, uh, is this line to me: <laughs> Vindicators can no longer dodge while immobilized. That was such horse crap. They were like, "Oh man, my feet are rooted to the ground. I can't I can't move, but it's okay. I can keep jumping into orbit. You know, boing 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 boing." And it was just like, they, they could just spam evades until the immobilized wore off. Uh, it was awful to deal with. It was absolutely awful. Like, right now, of all nine classes, 27 elite specs, the only classes that can, like, dodge while they're immobilized, not counting ones that dodge to break the immobilize, is Mirage Cloak. That's it. And then you had this guy who was leaping into orbit repeatedly but couldn't move. So yeah, I, I, I've been calling for this for a while. I'm glad to see it. I, uh, it's, it should be like the natural counter to it. <clears throat> um, Spear of Archimorus, not surprised to see this getting some tweaks. They've reduced the range cost by a massive 2,000 down to 1,200. I don't think they mentioned that during the broadcast unless I missed it. They did uh, mention this part, increase the power coefficient from 3.5 to 5 in PvE only and increase the torment duration from 5 to 8 seconds PvE only. Scavenger Burst, increase, uh, adjusted burning from 1 stack for 8 to 2 stacks for 5 in PvE only. Endurance gain increase from 5 per target to 20 per target in PvE only. That is big. Energy costs reduced from 20 to 15 in PvE only. Reduced power coefficient uh, slightly in PvP. 
Uh, tree Song reduced the energy cost uh, in PvE slightly. Battle Dance, same treatment. Nomads Advance, energy cost reduced in PvE only. Power Coefficient uh, reduced slightly in PvP. Reaver's Rage in PvP reduced power coefficient slightly, reduced stability duration by half of what it was, reduced the day's duration from 1.5 seconds to 1 second. Um, Thief. Our primary goal for Thief in this update is to improve the stability of Deadeye in PvE. Rifle has a lot of potential as a damage dealing option. Ah, this, this one's weird, guys. Buckle up, this one's weird. The stationary nature of Neil made it difficult to reach this potential in real gameplay situations. We're updating Neil to allow for some movement at reduced speed to give a bit more flexibility during encounters. Uh, so they showed it on the stream, but basically if you use Neil and then try to move, you can move around, but you do like a walking. I was hoping that you would stay kneeling and do like this little crab walk, but uh, sadly it's just that you stand up and do the walking animation. Um, so you can move while kneeling and, you know, still be firing shots the whole time, uh, but yeah, no crab walk, sadly. Uh, we've also added a damage reduction to Shadow Shroud and PvE to compensate for the reduction in Shroud health in the October update. We'll be keeping an eye on how this plays out and make further adjustments to Shadow Shroud as necessary. Wrapping up the thief changes are a handful of power damage improvements for Daredevil and Dagger. So, core changes to Thief. Double Strike increased power coefficient slightly in PvE. Uh, Wild Strike, same thing. Lotus Strike, same thing. Heart Seeker uh, increased power coefficient against targets at or above 50% health to 1.5. Increased power coefficient at targets under half health to 2.0. If they're under a quarter health, it becomes 2.5. Uh, terrifying damage on Heart Seeker, but PvE only. Cloak and Dagger increased power coefficient uh, slightly PvE only. Daredevil. Uh, impact Strike, increased power coefficient by over double in PvE only. Finishing Blow, increased power coefficient by double in PvE only. Deadeye Kneel, increased initiative cost from 1 to 2. While kneeling, players can now move at a 75% reduced speed. Kneel is no longer cancelled when you become disabled. I even as someone who doesn't play Thief at all and in PvP, my interaction with Thief is basically I kill them or they kill me. I don't like this change. Um, they're reducing the range of the Dead Eye shots from 1500 to 1200, which makes the rifle of a Dead Eye less range than a Ranger longbow, which doesn't make any sense to me, honestly. So I mean that's. That's, that's my opinion. You can share your thoughts down below. Um, that's judgment, however. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. They still you. nerfed Deadeye even THO. It's of worst specs. And I seriously hates Thief. Uh, that was just a brief word from our sponsor. Don't mind that. Uh, Death's Judgment, the skill now pierces foes not targeted by Deadeye's mark. So it will be easier. No, th this is actually kind of cool. It will be easier to hit the guy you're aiming at even if someone else is in the way because it will pierce through things that are in the way to hit the guy you're aiming at. Uh, damage dealt to unmarked enemies is reduced. Players can now move while using this skill. Reduced range from 1500 to 1200 again. Um, so th th this, I, I think that this is for, for dead eyes good for me bad because they will kill me with this. Uh, but th th I don't like the range reduction, but this, this part is pretty sweet. Um, Spectre, uh, Shadow Shroud added a half second cooldown to exit Shadow Shroud after using enter Shadow Shroud. Uh, I think that's just so if you're mashing the key trying to enter the shroud, you don't accidentally immediately exit it. Um, while in Shadow Shroud, incoming damage you take is reduced by 33% in PVE only. So that's nice. We'll see if it's enough to come, you know, bounce back from the earlier thing. <sighs> warrior. Uh, a handful of warrior skill and trait bonuses will be applied against defiant foes. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Untamed Warrior got a lot of this. We've also made adjustments to improve Berserker damage builds of PvE, fixed an issue of Bloody Roar's bonus damage, and making Outrage's Berserk extension more reliable. Now the headbutt it no longer removes stability. Enchantment Collapse is another boon removal outlier we want to address in Worldview World for this update, and we've increased the cooldown ever so slightly to reduce its effectiveness with Winds of Disenchantment. So core warrior changes. Fierce Blow will now work on Defiant enemies. Excuse me. Defiant, uh, sorry, Banner of Tactics will now break stuns on allies in addition to other effects. That's, uh, that's actually pretty cool. 
Um, I do, you know, uh, love me an AoE stun break. Uh, it feels pretty amazing when I play Ranger if I'm using Protect Me, uh, or if I was on a Guardian using like Standard Ground, and you know, you see your whole team get, uh, you know, locked down by, you know, like a, a a Necro Staff Five or something. You just fears all of you, or a Reaper does their freeze on all of you, and you get caught, and you hit one key and stun break the whole team. Feels amazing, mm, as Shy Patch would say. Uh, so this is cool. I, I do like me an AOE stun break. We'll see if this sees much action though. Unsuspecting foe, this trait now gives a 25% critical chance bonus when striking defiant foes in addition to its previous effect. These uh, bonuses do not stack. Merciless Hammer, this bonus damage from this trait will now always affect defiant foes. Uh, Berserker, Outrage, this skill no longer grants bonus berserk duration when breaking a stun and instead it grants bonus berserk duration when an enemy is nearby. Reduce berserk duration when an enemy is nearby from 5 seconds to 3 in PvE. Scorched Earth, uh, increase the power coefficient from 0.35 to 0.42 in World v. World only. I think that this one could be fun. Uh, Bloody Roar, fixed an issue that caused this trait to grant less increased damage than intended. So this is just a bug fix. Spellbreaker, Breaching Strike will now deal bonus damage to foes without boons. An enchantment collapse, and they even said during the broadcast, this is the most interesting thing of the entire bit. Increase the internal cooldown from 0 0.99 to 1.04. I don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to handle a buff this large. I, I don't know if uh, they're going to be able to handle this, this change. This is, this is, un, this is clearly just CMC unchained. This is out of control, and uh, you know someone needs to stop him. Uh, but with those changes, those are your November 11th, 2022 patch notes or i should say preview notes uh the actual patch happens on november 29th uh it is also important to note that uh this stuff is also in the forums i will uh, i've said this twice already but i will have a link to the forum notes and where you can go underneath and complain about how they're ruining your class or yada 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 and if you want to see anything changed post make a post i can't stress that enough uh, they are striving to read all of these. Um, you know, so, some of y'all have really bad ideas. They're just going to ignore those. But they're striving to read all of these. And the last two patches they did, they did change them between the preview and between the release because of feedback on the forum. So if you really like or really hate something, put it on there. And who knows? Maybe it might lead to something. But that's it for now. Uh, you know, like and subscribe. Bye.